originally I was supposed to pub to make and publish this this review a few days earlier, but uh, there are two reasons why I'm delaying this review. First of all, I got distracted. I mean, I got my new Nintendo Switch from from you saw from my video of it how excited I was so much that I. I am beginning to finally play Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, in short, really, really cool game. Really cool game. That's my short, short version. And the second of all, there was an incident that happened in certain place, and I'm not gonna go into detail, but there was something personal around it. This is this is why I thought that a little bit out of respect, I had to take that day off from. Or from doing videos or talking something about, uh, like that. Um, but anyway, I finally decided to talk about the movie that I just saw this Thursday. And that movie is none other than the horror film uh, The Possession of Anna Grace. Yep, it's The Possession of Anna Grace. I gotta say that I was... I thought it was gonna be a decent movie according to the trailer. But unfortunately, we are a little bit on the Christmas, post, pre-Christmas season films, and horror movies that come out at, at this point doesn't exactly come off of being the good ones. It's kind of like uh, preparing for, for January. Uh, it's it's kind of like the, the that movie that I saw, The Pyramid. Ooh, that one really sucked. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And... Well, let's let's get on to business. Uh, right now, what can I say about the possession of Hannah Grace? It's a possession film, a possession horror film that I'm not. It's not. It's probably one of my least favorite of the horror horror some genre because there's not much you can do with possession films except that. There's a guy or a woman who is possessed. They want to go to put a little bit of a spin to the exorcism. Some can be done real good, some can be done decent, and some can be done bad. Where does the possession Hannah Grace go? I will say that this is one of the boring ones. Um, fortunately, I was technically very bored on this film. But as a movie merit, it's... So so. Um, I'm not gonna say that it's a horrible film, but unfortunately, it does fall into some of the traps that these kind of movies goes. I will say that I think I like this movie less than the Nun. If you could catch my drift, um, how I can rate from the horror movie that I came out that came out this year, uh, and it. How can I explain this movie? Let's start out why the movie fails. First of all, we got the story which, in which it has some potential. Because it, it, the movie is about this this woman who was an ex-cop who one has who I think she was she's a little bit of an alcoholic has a post-traumatic disorder because she. Uh, she, she, while she was being a cop, she kind of failed to shoot a criminal that uh, that ended up killing her partner. And because of that, I think she was fired and then she's depressed. She she feels anxious and as a coping mechanism, she gets a job uh, be, uh, on the morgue in uh, Boston Hospital. And... Uh, everything is well, kind of fine and dandy until she receives a corpse of a of of a mutilated mutilated girl named mm -hmm. Hannah Grace, in which she was found three months three months after her supposed death, which I'll get get to that. And apparently, that corpse came with something very supernatural. There, that's the that's technically the synopsis that I can give you from this movie. First off, how the movie was, how the movie was told in in storytelling perspective, I will say that it has some strengths, but it also, but it has more weaknesses than strength, because it starts out with this prologue that apparently the uh, uh, the well not apparently it is shown that the that the that the that the corpse who is a girl named Hannah Grace. 
she was possessed by a demon and and the exorcism was technically going uh, going well not so good and you it, it's probably the biggest highlight of this movie the in, the introduction of this exorcism which which kind of fail and the father of Hannah Grace he has no choice but to kill her by smothering with her pillow but then three months later we get introduced to our main character who is who is named Megan we we see her that she she practices she she work out she uh, it gives us the information that she gets this new job in that Boston hospital in a graveyard shift and we meet some of the characters that we know she is having with some problems that she doesn't want to admit and I don't know she had it doesn't it doesn't the problem with the movie is that it doesn't specify some of the some of the stuff to make things clear about what's going on at least on my take but then she that but then one day one day later she receives the corpse and Another thing that happens from what I can get is that there is this homeless guy who wants to, who tries to enter the building. Well, 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 I'll I'll get to that just in case. And he just wants to cop. He just wants the corpse and all that stuff. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm trying to dissect this movie and story and storytelling is is a little bit complicated I'll say because there's some strings that you have to you, know, you have to untie in order to make sense it's not easy for me to talk about it especially in front of the camera uh, so anyway we do have some character who are well so so uh, let's say that despite the the actors acting very decently it's not impressive I will say that probably uh, most of the most of the actors they kind of like technically sleepwalking. Maybe it's me, but they're not bad. They're trying their best. Uh, although there were some parts in which I kind of think that they should need a bigger reaction than just standing there and uh, something like that. Unless you're going for a psychological thriller, in which this movie is not. Um. Well, there are. With, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown of some of the characters. Again, starting with the main character, which, again, nothing much to say. She has main character powers. She kind of does, is not essentially faced with anything except when it's convenient. Uh, she has a little bit of an arc, I'll say, but I was more confused about that arc. Then she, I think it was her boyfriend or the friend of, uh, who is who is all still a cop who communicates with her. Not much. I kind of don't understand this guy. He's, he's just kind of there to be kind of like the uh, the link to the cops. Uh, there's also the main character's friend. Um, there is... Oh! Uh, the security guards. The security guards in... <laughs> is, is, you know that these guys are technically the... Uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, they're just lying to be killed. There's this fat cop, uh, but the most, probably the most unintentionally memorable of all these characters is this, is this guy, this young cop who apparently he has the hots for the, for the main character, or he's very young and, and all this stuff, but man, that, for some reason, in my head, he kind of looks like the love child of... Uh, uh, what was, uh, what was it cut? It's kind of like when if you, uh, it, it's kind of like what would you get when you mix Will Ferrell with Screech from Safe Safe by the Bell, and and almost taking that kind of mannerism, especially because this guy, he comes up with one of the lamest jump scares of this year. And this will tell you what you're gonna get into this movie. With movies, try this movie sometimes trying too hard to give you a scare, and sometimes fail, especially when they're giving you the, the fake jump scare. In particular, this guy, because there is this scene in which, in which, how can I say that uh, our main character is doing her her job, 
and then we come to a shot in which she's she's looking at the cor corpse in the morgue, and when she closes uh what was it the tray where they keep the keep the corpse. Once she closes the tray, he appears on, on the back of that tray, and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" I was like, "Oh, I was the, then." I, nobody saw me, luckily, but I was kind of like wanting, uh, making those gestures to want to punch this guy <laughs> because <laughs> let's be honest, nobody likes a uh, fake jump scare that is uh, that is executed that poorly. Oh uh, yeah, and then we got the homeless guy who... Uh, the homeless guy, apparently it felt like he just had a little bit of a necrophilic uh, obsession. But then later it is revealed that no, he is the father of, of Hannah Gray. Hannah Gray's. And he just wants to destroy the... He just wants to destroy the course by... But by incinerating her into the incinerator where they they burn the, the corpse, where they cremate the corpse. That was the word. Even though, um, that kind of begs the question what was happening during those three months. And from that, I kind of bring you the other character, which is none other than the corpse itself, Anna Grace. Anna Grace is this, it, 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 it has this corpse that, that it, you can see that it has some burn marks. It, it, it has some slashes here and there. And like I said, this is a this is a corpse that came out from a uh, failed possession. But even after death, the, even after death, uh, apparently the cor the demon is still there. They never name what the what the name of the demon just in case. But the thing is that the corpse is there, and then it. It kind of created all these il illusions to to its victims, and whatever it wants to kill, it it kind of kills them like they have the force, the Star Wars force. It just lifts them. It just makes them have have the stigma position, which kind of like Jesus Christ, like this. But some, but you might expect that it just wants to rip them in half, but no. It just kind of breaks their neck and and everything like that. Even the even as a spoiler, probably the best the best kill in the movie is when he when she killed uh she killed the the freezy guy that again looks like the 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 crossbred of Will Arnett and Screech. Uh, that was tech, that was probably the best death in 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 the movie. But there it it also comes to the point. Uh, I don't know if it's by plot convenient by saying that. Every time that thing kills kills any anyone, the the wounds heal, so it has he, a healing factor, and how many people it kills. And again, uh, that kind of begs the question: why things didn't happen sooner? It's never explained why it took like three three months to get rid of the body or something like that. Even if the, even if it shows that the father kind of tried. I tried even burning and it doesn't and also it kind of doesn't guarantee that burning burning the corpse into cinders is guaranteed that the demon will die is there explain that uh, that will be something that I have to talk about the ending in a, you know in a, uh, when I get there oh that but still that kind of brings me the question. I don't know what was the, on the demon's mind, but from all the people going around in, in that building, I don't know why the demon can't kill the main character. I mean, the main character was kind of like the, the one who was near that course many times. So why doesn't go there to it for the prey? It never established that. It, it didn't establish... Why it want? Why it leave the main character for the search or something like that? Someone please explain me that. And now we go with the cinematography. The cinematography goes from decent to bad because the pacing is technic. I don't know. It kind of felt slow, even though this is a, a movie with a regular time lim uh, time time span. It only it's only like eighty five minutes long, but it felt that it went kind of kind of long and again 
some of the story elements that ha that happens sometimes comes out of nowhere that doesn't feel like they connect well to the movie. Yeah? Even in the, in the it, it feels that like it tries too hard to give a give out a theme. In this one, they wanted to make a theme about depression and, and anxiety. Yeah? And in my head, it was like, oh dear, and again with those anxiety things. Look, I saw the South, I saw the South Park episode that same day, and, and I was like, uh, and I was like thinking that oh. Are you gonna hammer me the, with, with the anxiety this day? And it doesn't help out that there's a, there's a character who I'm not gonna technically reveal, but pro probably the most likable character. He kind of say, "Hey, I got this, I got this son, and all this stuff." And and I was like, "Oh well, prepare to die, dude. Your son is gonna miss you." Yep, but they didn't. He he just said it just to. Give, uh, give us a little bit of an excuse to like him and not to build it up. They didn't build it. I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's bad, but it, this one had to handle a little bit better if you want us to get a little bit of an emotional investment. What else I can say about the cinematography? Um, I want you to help me out on this one. I never personally went to the morgue. I... I I think I saw it and I glimpsed out of it. I never went to a graveyard shift, but I kind of doubt that when you work when that the morgue really kind of looked like a World War II bunker, or, or that it, it, you only have one staff working almost the entire the entire night night. I think for this one you need two people. Although, get, don't get me wrong, I think that it sometimes uh, out of certain budget reasons or or personal reasons, there is one guy working alone. Even though, mm, no, it, maybe it's just me. And um, what else I can say about this movie? Because I, I honestly have not much to say. It's just, I just kind of got bored out of the movie. Uh, I think I know a little bit. Um, uh, the end. Uh, the ending. I was kind of unimpressed. It wanted to show again that it tries too hard about saying that the the main that the char that the character has to. Uh, oh, you know what? I was I was just rambling because I have to put my thoughts together right now. Here's the thing. Apparently, what they said is that. The re that apparently the reason why Hannah Grace was possessed is that they come from a Christian family and she was having anxiety. And that's it. That's the only thing that they told us. And I just wanted to know more. More about that demon. Where it come from and all that. And that it targets anxiety? I don't know. Probably this... I'm repeating I don't know a lot of times. How can I say this? It feels that this movie was a little bit sloppily written. It uh, and for me, that's kind of endangered territory. We don't want a movie that came out that it feels like that that awful movie known as The Darkness. The Darkness was one of the few horror movies that I found that it was terrible and personally insulted. But it uh, yeah, and guess what? The father is killed and. And after many, many things, uh, we get the typical ending that the main character... <laughs> there is this moment in which they kind of reflect what she had to deal with the past by finally shooting the corpse. <laughs> the corpse... I don't know why why bullets kind of knocks out a dead body. Even, I even thought, okay, maybe it's the demon. But then they... Burn the demon in the incinerator. <laughs> and in my mind, trust me that in my mind, I wanted an ending. I wanted, I wanted the, that this thing about burning a, a, a possessed body. I was hoping that it ended up like in, like the thing that made a lot of zombies in Return of the Living Dead. Remember that movie that that incinerating the the zombie it made rain and then the rain the, the acid rain it 
it land onto the other corpse and then things get worse. I wanted something like that. But now we got technically a happier ending in which everything fine and dandy and the movie kind of psychs us out saying that, oh, then our main character is possessed. But no, there was the symbolism about a fly and that it, 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 uh, it, this fly flies around on the corpse of Hannah Grace and when it flies on to their main character, she just, she just kills it. Ah. Uh. It's not bad. Again, it's not a terrible movie. I just find it a boring movie, a very below average film. That's the that if you want me to be a little bit forgiving on this movie. Maybe I am. I'm seeing worse films than this one. Maybe it needed a little bit of a polish to uh, uh to this film. And uh, that's you know what, maybe talking about this movie makes me feel unmotivated for a bit. Not much I have to say. That uh, The possession of Hannah Grace is as good as a little bit of a rental film. It tried. At least I could give it that. It tried to be, be a good movie. It didn't. It just, it just below average. That's technically what I have to say. I s probably next week I'm gonna have to take a break from movies. Um... Because I, there, I think there was nothing going on. I, I'll see if something catches my eye for at least for a while. But I know that something that takes me out of my anxiety is that next week we got Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. <sighs> now that is something to look up for. And too bad Hannah Grace didn't that uh, didn't. Uh, it's not alive to enjoy that. <laughs> 